via telephone, Wayne Clark, as in Delegate Wayne Clark, joins us from Charleston. Wayne, good morning to you. Good morning to you all. Wayne, did you file? I did yesterday. Was there a long line? Not when I went, uh, but there was an extremely long line on uh, on the eighth. Um, I think the line was about forty deep, and I was walking by the uh, office, and I was like, "I'll wait till tomorrow." So I walked in, and uh, with ten minutes in and out. Wayne, would this be your third term? Should you be reelected? Yes, it will. Uh, excited about that. I enjoy being down here in Charleston. I enjoy uh, doing work for the folks of the 99th um, and for the folks here in the state. Tell me about your LG trip, because recently that became pretty big news around here. Uh, yes, so uh, really excited about LG, uh, LG Nova to be exact, uh, coming to the state of West Virginia. Um, what we're going to see over the next uh, short time is uh, we're going to see the telehealth center opening it up uh, in Huntington, so they're going to expand on it. Um, the you know, the technology in regards to doing and handling telehealth. So that's going to be exciting news, um, you know, down the road. Something that's extremely exciting is, you know, in relation to Nucor, um, LG uses the steel that Nucor is going to build. So there's a high likelihood of seeing a, uh, a manufacturing uh, a component come into the state uh, that's going to be using the new core steel to build the appliances here in the state of West Virginia. So um, just exciting things happening uh, in the state. Yeah, Wayne, uh, the uh, LG Nova, uh, I'm a little confused what they'll be doing. Uh, you, you're you implying building appliances. I've heard they were going to be more in the AI, artificial intelligence uh, circuit. Do you have a good sense of what, what they'll actually be doing? LG Nova is their innovation uh, division. So they're going to be uh, working with... Um, Right now, Marshall University, WVU, uh, we're trying to work uh, some sort of a uh, connection with Shepherd University as well um, to where they're all going to, you know, looking at how they improve on their technology, um, yes, on the AI um, uh, uh, improvements, you know. And, you know, a lot of people are, are, you know, you see, oh, AI, these robots and all that stuff. We've had AI forever. You know, if anybody ever does Siri on their phone, um, I do it all the time. I have Apple CarPlay, and it's like, Siri, call Rob Mario, and it calls Rob Mario for me. You know, um, Good choice, but, by <laughs> the way, Wayne. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, 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 there are people that have smart refrigerators that tell them they're out of milk. You know, so that is all AI. That is all AI that we're using right now. So expanding on that and how they can expand on that in their appliance division. So that's what we're going to see at first. And then down the road, that's where the exciting part of potentially having a manufacturing facility here. You know, I'm Wayne, you- by, by the way, just yeah. to show you this real quick to jump in here, Bill, this is very funny. My phone is right beside... The microphone and the headphones. When you said Siri, call Rob Mario, my phone called me. I'm not, I'm not making that up. Right now, it's wait, It's got a picture of you with a bunch of flowers right behind a West Virginia Economic Development sign, Taiwan office. That's the, you're, and that's what's going on right now. Man, right? AI, is, AI is really advanced to high levels. <laughs> it, it's pretty, it yeah. is pretty amazing. Um, I did not did know Mike Hornby had that much technology up there. That is, that is very funny. And also, Rick Mann and said his tried to do the same yeah. thing. <laughs> Everyone's trying to call me or you right now, Wayne. <laughs> hey, Wayne, all the cell towers are tied up. Yes. <laughs> Wayne, you mentioned the uh, uh, LG Nova uh, with Marshall WVU and also trying to tie in with Shepard. Uh, that would be a marvelous thing if it could happen. We tend to get a lot of attention toward WVU and Marshall, good schools, but we have a very we have a gem of a school in the Eastern Panhandle. So I hope that does materialize with some association between LG and uh, and Shepard. Yes, uh, Eric Lewis and I, we uh, chatted via email 
uh, about the opportunities with Shepherd University. I think Shepherd does not get some of the credit they deserve. It's a, it's a wonderful school. Um, you know, my kids they're they're juniors, and you know they're they're thinking about Shepherd University, and you know um, I'd be happy to have them going to Shepherd University. Yeah. Maria. So to change gears a little bit, um, so what's your sense? And I know sometimes it's uh, it could be just about anything. What's your sense of what the governor is going to talk about in his um, state of the state? Always up for a surprise, a dog or <laughs> any number of things. But do you have any sense of that, Wayne, or any expectation? Let's put it that way. Well, I have some hopes. Okay. I'll say that. All right. And, you know, asking around, you know, anybody know? Anybody know? And we're all in the same kind of boat. But uh, I hope that he focuses on our workforce. Um, I hope that he focuses on uh, a huge issue that we have, especially in Jefferson County, uh, child care. Um, excited to hear that we just uh, appointed a new uh, child care child care advocacy um, task force within the uh, the House of Delegates and so that's um, something good uh, you know obviously we're going to talk about you know our surplus and we're going to talk about the fact that the triggers that we put into the record tax uh, credit that we gave last year uh, we could see an, an additional uh, reduction this year because we're meeting the threshold uh, which we set, which was $250 million. So we could see an additional uh, tax credit come at the end of this fiscal year. So I'm hoping he's talking about that. Um, I'm hoping that he uh, continues to talk about um, growth in the state um, and spreading that growth around. Uh, I want to see him talk about um, small business growth and and growing entrepreneurship, that kind of stuff. I think we're going to see a lot of that over the next few years with some of the work we've done with our in innovation, um, areas space innovation uh, with Marshall University specifically, uh, their, their, their uh, aerospace program that they're putting on. And I know Nick Deal wants to work on some additional programming there where they're working on um, some aerospace um, uh, uh, expansions as well. I hope that we see something in regards to that as an initiative. So we we have heard that there one of the initiatives is of of course a a five percent I think it was five percent um, increase for state employees. How do you feel that will be received by the the legislature? Is it going to get across the finish line? I know there's a lot of hurdles to jump over. I think Craig, um, Craig talked the, about that last week too. It, so uh -huh. he seems like he's behind it. Okay. Yeah, well, we, that that's. We, we know that we're going to get that across the finish line. We Good. know that we're going to address uh, our corrections and our EMS. We know we're going to address those. Uh, when we were in special session um, earlier in the year, uh, and you know we we threw a Band-Aid out on on our EM firing EMS, and um, now since then, uh, Delegate Kelly's been working his tail off like he has been for the last few years. Um, so we're. We're looking to see additional expansion um, and funding for those programs. Delegate Wayne Clark is our guest here on the program from the 99th. Where are you sitting tonight, Wayne? When I'm watching the governor's state of the state, will I see your skull? Uh, probably not, because I am on the on the camera side. If you're facing directly at the speaker, I'm all the way on the left hand side by the wall. They always put the chairs of the major committees against the wall, so we can uh, can you know talk with our attorneys in and out and and uh, make easy access out of the building. So. You're not going to see me uh, unless they do a panoramic, and then, you know, um, do we really want to see the back of my skull anyway? <laughs> there's, there's no hair on it. <laughs> uh, Wayne, uh, there's going to be some changes in the chairs of the major committees. We know more Capito is, uh, has stepped down. Do you have any idea who the new chairs will be or who the chairs will be? Uh, Tom Fast is going to take over for judiciary, uh, and I'm excited about uh, uh, that. I've worked well with Tom um, from the very beginning uh, of my, uh, my my sessions in 21, and we have we have a 
you know, strong mindset of, you know, working on protecting protecting of kids um, from, you know, uh, Internet things and uh, things that kids have seemed to abuse. So I'm excited. Tom's, Tom's good. Uh, he's got a, a real conservative kind of uh, background, and I, I think we'll see some, some good stuff coming out of a judiciary. Good. This is uh, uh, the final year of the two-year term uh, for delegates. Wayne, obviously, it's the last year for the governor's four-year, second four-year term. And there's going to be, as Bill mentioned, a lot of turnover uh, going into next year. Uh, does that put pressure on you folks to get the things done that were left undone at the end of the last term because of how many changes there's going to be when you all get together again the following year? Yes, and it's a it's a constant talk, you know, with everything that's going going on uh, with people moving to other, you know, maybe going to Senate, maybe going to a state. Or, you know, people going in into the court system or, or just not coming back. So, you know, we have nine brand new delegates uh, that did not serve in the 23 session uh, just from some of that turnover that, you know, we got to bring up the speed. We got to get them, you know, acclimated to how things work down in Charleston because it, it works in a completely different world. And I've told folks about it before. Uh, when you're scheduling meetings, you're scheduling meetings on minutes, not on hours, because it's such a high pace environment. So, you know, getting as much done as we can this session, um, because I, I'm going to say we're going to have 30-some new uh, next year, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of great institutional knowledge uh, that is leaving us, you know, uh, Eric Householder going, you know, to the auditor's office. You know, he's been in the legislature, I think, since 2012 or 14. I mean, he's been here for a long time. You know, that's why he's our majority leader. Um, so losing that him is, is going to be, you know, detrimental. As we have people that can step up, but th- there's not a lot, you know, that, that, are, that are sticking around. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting dynamic when we come in here, um, walk in on January of 25. You are the vice chair of economic development and tourism. As more delegates move on to other things, are you in line for a chairmanship position in 2025, Wayne? I can tell you a couple things. One, I love being in economic development and tourism. I love being on the education committee. But if the leadership feels that uh, I can be better suited in, uh, you know, a chair position, at, you know, somewhere else, um, then I'll entertain that. Uh, I. I love my assignments that I have, and you know I I, I think I I do a great job uh, in the committees that I am in. What do you think about uh, the governor's approach during these state of the state address, addresses, Wayne? As you're a veteran of a few of them now, and uh, as he's going through them, these these all appear to be off the cuff. I've never seen the guy refer to a script or look like he's looking at a teleprompter. Uh, are they as off the cuff as they appear to be? Yes. I remember uh, in 21, uh, the governor came in and did a dry run uh, with with the uh, Republican caucus at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon and kind of went through what he's going to say. Um, and then, you know, 7 o'clock, here we go. Here we, we're ready to go. And it's completely different. <laughs> but everybody's looking at each other like, what? He didn't say that earlier. So, so yeah, I, I, you know, if there's a script, it's real small, and he's got great eyesight, but uh, we don't see him with papers. Yeah. So, you know, just from the dry run, you have an idea what he might be talking about, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually going to be no what you're talking about. Correct. Yeah. Uh, are you looking for any surprises from him tonight? I hope not. <laughs> you know, I, I really do. I, 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 I hope he, I hope not. You know, um, you know, everybody remembers back in 21 how much fun we had with, with that surprise when he came in, you know, and didn't tell us about the tax swap and we had to vote it down zero to 100. Um, you know, but uh, so I hope nothing like that comes along. Bill? Yeah. Uh, local elections, uh, we're now, as we've been talking about all morning, time to file. Uh, are there any surprises in Jefferson County of folks that are going to be running for office? 
Any surprises? Yeah, anybody that you were not expecting, anybody that you're particularly pleased that uh, decided to run? Um, I, I was surprised to hear John Doyle. Um, I thought he was ready to retire from everything. Um, so I was surprised to see John Doyle uh, throw his name on the hat. But uh, everything else has been kind of, I, I, I don't want to say planned, but we kind of we knew this person was filing, that person was filing. You know, so we kind of knew that was coming along. You know, I could say uh, uh, there are some people that were a little surprised that um, one of the opponents of my my primary, um, you know, was was coming along and, and filed pre candidacy papers, and you know hasn't haven't seen that they've actually filed uh, um, officially yet. But that was a little bit of a surprise. But nothing else. I think everything else we kind of knew was going to happen. Wayne recently. Americans for Prosperity, West Virginia, endorsed both Senator Blair and Senator Rucker. And I found that to be interesting because on that same day on my phone, I got a picture of Delegate Espinosa signing his candidacy papers to run for Senate with Senator Blair standing right beside him with a big smile on his face. And so I found it to be ironic that AFP West Virginia was endorsing Rucker and Blair at the same time that was going on, when clearly they are not endorsing each other's candidacies, uh, to put it politely. Do endorsements mean anything to you folks? And do you personally seek them, or do they just happen to come to you based on the way you've been voting? Well, I can't speak for others in regards to this. I can speak for myself. Okay, um, endorsements, they're great. You know, I, I, I love getting them. I don't seek them. You know, and the reason why is because I feel that the work I do will be recognized on, on itself. Uh, you know, I'm not one of these persons that, you know, um, posts statements, you know, on my Facebook consistently, you know, oh, look at what I did, look at what I did, look at what I did. Um, and, and that's the same thing at how I run my golf course, you know, um, and running my business, you know, I don't do all that stuff. I mean, you know, I could go on and on about all the things we do at Locust Hill Golf Course, you know, for the community, um, but I don't do that. It's not, that's not who I am. I, 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 it makes me feel good when I get recognized for things, um, but I, I don't, I don't chase after that. I come down, do my job, um, and I try and do the best I can. Maria, do you think um, endorsements in general are they going by the wayside? Do you think, um, do you think the average voter pays much attention to them, Wayne? Uh, I. I don't know for sure. Again, I want to speak for others, you know, but uh, at times, I, I, I guess you could say, you know, I, you expect certain endorsements for work that you do, you know, and, you know, the overall endorsement. And, I mean, and, unless they're actually sending out, uh, you know, uh, you know, paying for an ad or paying for, um, hey, I, we want to point out the great things that Wayne Clark has done. You know, I, I guess those are important. You know, those are kind of recognitions of what we've done. Um, you know, so that, yes, voters take a look at that, especially when they get it in the mail or, you know, they get it in the email or however it's delivered. Um, but, uh you know, I think voters, you know, they they kind of see what's going on in their in their area, and they can they can make their decisions based off of that. Yeah, I feel a little bit different, Wayne. I think that uh, for political junkies like we are and like bulk of the people that listen to this show, they do take some time to become familiar with the candidates uh, and what they stand for. But there is a segment of our voters that do not spend a lot of time investing their time and getting to understand the candidates they vote primarily from a comfort level if they and a name recognition that's that's my right. point my point they get a comfort level from yard signs or the flyers that come in and uh they're oblivious to the position they're just looking for a comfort level again the name recognition so yes Wayne, I've got about a minute left. Uh, what can you do this term to make West Virginia wineries and destination places like that more uh, able to compete with Virginia and Maryland wineries and such? I am so glad you asked that. I'm going to try and 
solve this in, in, in one minute. I've been working on a farm winery bill that it's gotten uh, huge traction. Um, we're re- it's going to be uh, introduced today on the first day of session uh, and, and referred directly over to committee. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're, we're telling Virginia, here we come. Uh, we are doing everything we can to make the farm wineries and starting off with the little farm wineries. Uh, you know, we have one here in uh, Berkeley County, Rusty Nail, you know, um, helping them to be competitive. And then we have some bigger ones. You know, I, I was on Monday, I went over to Stone Road uh, Winery over in Ravenswood uh, and had an opportunity to talk with them. And, uh, it's going to make the economic development and tourism of farm wineries compete with Loudoun County, with you know the rest of the state of Virginia. Uh, so I, I feel that we are going to um, be able to to really do great things. Um, you know, talking about in our area of saving farms. And on, you know, on that note, Wayne, you you used up your whole minute, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. Took care of it. But I, I could talk about that forever. Hey, well, I'll get you back on once you guys get underway and you can introduce that bill. How's that? Awesome. Thank Th- you. Thank you, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. All right. Thank you, thank guys. Thank you. All right, bye. Final minute next.